Welcome everyone, this is your host and coach Brandon McFay, and this is Hoops Journey, where we'll be talking about basketball business. I got your boy Raekwon Gray today, and we're going to be talking about how his hoop journey is going and where he's looking to go to. And if this is your first time listening to this podcast, please subscribe on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. Let's go ahead and dive into the conversation with Raekwon. Raekwon, how you doing, man? It's been a minute, man. Yeah, I'm good. I'm good, man. Just popping in to see the family down here. You know, spending the off season getting ready for the season coming up. So I've been good, I've been working, grinding. That's good. How would you say your uh, off season was? Um, just a lot of like in the gym working. I feel like uh, just trying to hone in on what I need to focus on for the season coming up, strengthening my weaknesses. Obviously, adding on to my strengths and really just sharpening my body, my mind, you know, taking care of myself and uh, enjoying myself too. So, yeah. Yeah. So, let's talk about just like uh, for my guests, like give them just like a beginning, you know, kind of stage of like who Raekwon is and just like where you come from. I think you got a unique story, you know, one that, you know, a lot of people can could understand the, uh, what is it called? The, 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 you know, the mighty miles to come to a big man and uh, overcome a lot of adversity? Uh, I mean, it started early. I feel like maybe fourth grade, I think I started picking up basketball. Nine years old, I know that for sure. But I really just got into it from playing at the park, you know, falling in love with it, playing with older guys. Um, my first memory of basketball, I would say, just playing um, yeah, at the park, nine you just out there running around, just chasing the ball. I didn't know like, it would get me to this point in my life, but. I started with a lot of hair lines. One of my friends in elementary school came to me about playing, I guess, AAU basketball back then. I just went with it. You know, I went to a church gym. It was hot. Uh, I didn't know what to expect. I just yeah. went in there and was uh, doing, like, a lot of conditioning, too. So, like, yeah. after that first day, I'm like, oh, I don't know if I you know, want to come <laughs> back to it. But, yeah. I mean, it, it kind of showed me how to work harder at an early age. And that's when, like, really when I fell in love with it. And I just started to watch it and pick up on it from then. So, yeah. Most definitely, man. Uh, just – Tell people, I guess, about like how, you know, you first started off as like a shooting guard and uh, uh, a small shooting guard yeah. at that. <laughs> and then you, you had a growth spurt, a great yeah. summer and, you know, kind of turned your game into almost a, you know, uh, most people. And I call them and I tell them, you know, even the NBA scouts didn't yeah. know you started off as a, you know, a, a guard. And talk about that transition from being a, 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 a ball handler to one that now you know, kind of, uh, you know, yeah. kind of uh, depends on the point guard. But say, you know, I think you should explain, you know, also how like Draymond Green became yeah. a point guard, how that impacted your your journey. Uh, man, I got to thank God. I mean, I grew overnight. I feel like I think yeah. uh, I started to grow like as I started to play basketball more, I started to grow. And that's when I really started to feel like a basketball player. You know, you can't be a short basketball player. It's, if you want to get to the highest level, I think it's hard. But honestly, I mean, Having the ball skills, I think, at a young age kind of helped me to where I'm at today. I think a lot of teams that I play with use me as a, I guess, a facilitator and be able to play make and, you know, run the offense through me. But I just came from playing outside and just going on YouTube, watching people dribble. i never forget, um, as a kid, I watched John Wall mixtape. It was like a hoop mixtape. I went outside and just trying to copy what he did and, and just kind of build it off that. You know, I started to get in the gym with you, and we kind of just honed in on ball handling. And I think that just built my confidence, too, and um, I started to see the game differently. And, I think that that was my advantage at that point when I started to grow and you didn't really see guys like my height dribbling like that. And once Draymond got into the league and started to kind of carve out his role, it was kind of easy for me to just follow that path and really just uh, follow into his footsteps a little bit. So, yeah. Right. What would you say the biggest difference like from, you know, like the high school to like uh, college? Definitely the physicality. I think the speed yeah. and just the talent level overall. I think uh, obviously going from – Playing in, at Dillard, you know, down in Fort Lauderdale, I was one of the best players in the state. So you go to college and you got 15 of the best guys that played, you know, in high school basketball. So I registered my first year. So that was like an experience for me. I think um, that really taught me how to like uh, carry myself, how to be professional and hone in on my work and uh, what I need to do to get on the court. So, uh, yeah, it was good, though. It was good. I mean, um, yeah, that's I, I mean, registered is, is a lot for me. I feel like. Uh, that really made me who I am today, though. So, yeah, I can, I can definitely be thankful for that. So let's definitely put some context to uh, his redshirt year. Understand that Raekwon graduated 
at like 17. He graduated very, very early. I, 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 I mean, he could have, he could have easily, you know, went to prep school and probably been top five player in the country. But he decided to redshirt and go to college. So yeah. let's put some context to that. Oh, uh, and yeah. then, I mean, so what about I guess like your travel, travel basketball? Let's say going from a guy that just like you know your early years where you really didn't you know play a lot yeah. to now being an ESPN top you yeah. know one hundred guy. Uh, I think it just came through the work. I feel like uh, I was a little discouraged though. I can't can't even sit here and like say I wasn't. Uh, my probably my freshman in high school because you see all the other guys. You might feel that like you're better than getting offers. Um, and just I just kept working. I think the day it changed, my, well, my life changed, I think, for me in basketball was when I got my first scholarship offer. It was to, what was it, Binghamton? Binghamton University <laughs> yeah. in New York? I'm like, man, like, hey. Yeah. At that point, I knew I could go yeah. to college. So at that point, yeah. I just started to work a little harder and, yeah. and go from there. But as I got older, you know, I got better. My sophomore year, I started to get a little bit more schools and people started to recognize me a little bit. And, um, I really just kept working. I think that was my main thing. I remember days you come get me at seven, eight in the morning. We'd go yeah. to the kid camp and I'll work out uh, yeah. like during the lunch break as they was working out. We'd get an hour and then, yeah. then an hour after that and then we'd go to practice. So those days I really felt like built me up to, I guess, molded me for my rest year, which I got to college. And I will not say it was a slap in the face for me, but I always thought I was one of the better players and I was confident and I still feel like to this day I could have played my freshman year or wherever I went. But uh, yeah, it was tough for me. I think the rest of the year definitely helped me. Um, just showed me what I need to improve on. It was a lot of guys bigger than me. I was playing against guys like 7'3", seven, 7'4". Seven, so yeah, I had to yeah. learn how to finish around the basket. Yeah. Uh, learn how to take open shots when I when I have open shots. So, yeah, I would say that was the toughest part. The, the, definitely the red shirt, just going in as a freshman and having that, I won't say cockiness about myself, but the confidence and then kind of just, that, it shot me down a little bit, but I had to learn like, you know, the, my foundation to rebuild that foundation and like depend on that. So yeah, it was a good year for me though. Yeah. I want to talk about another defining moment of your career. It's uh, I will, I, I perceive it as one of the biggest defining moments of your career. And it was only probably one college coach probably in the gym yeah. when he, when you had like 32 points. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So after that, I think it's just like, it just was like, yeah. everything changed, but just tell me how, you know, we could talk about the game and then how just like, after that, when yeah. you got invited to all these, you know, camps and all this stuff. Yeah. Uh, I remember that game, like, really, like, yesterday. I think uh, it was Coach Webster. Shout out Coach Webster, man, Tracy Webster. He was there. was in the back gym. Yeah, yeah, He was yeah. in Louisville, Kentucky, cold, dark. Yeah. He was out there playing. But, um, yeah, that game, I just went in, like, playing hard. You always kind of preach that. like, you know, fly around. I got a yeah. video on my phone. Like, <laughs> Just fly around, play hard. Yeah. LeBron was out here, here blocking off the glass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I really just went in and focused on that, and I just ended up scoring a lot of points. And I didn't realize until, like, after the game, like, really what happened because it was one coach there. Then the next game we played, like, 25 coaches there. And the yeah. same thing happened for me. I, I didn't score 30, but I had a good game. And then it just kind of trickled down the effect. Everybody started to see me play. And really just my name started to get growing from there. But that, that day I definitely was, like, a defining moment for me. Like, I scored – that many points. That was my career highlight at the time. Yeah. And I couldn't believe it. Like everybody else was in the van talking to me, my teammates, like, oh yeah. After that camp invite started to come in. Once I got the camp invites, I'm like, yeah, this is what I've been waiting on. So I seen players like Michael Porter, Trey Young and all those guys. And I feel like it was my time to like show that I, I either I belong there or I don't. So I took advantage of all the opportunities that came with from that game alone. I think that just presented a bunch of opportunities for me. So Right. So when did it like become like we all have this NBA dream, you know what I mean? But when did it become like reality for you to be like, man, yeah. hey, yeah. it's about to happen, man. I'm about to be an NBA yeah. player. Probably. This might sound crazy, but I always thought I can get to the NBA like the day I picked up a basketball, but I didn't know how like to get yeah. there. Like I thought like my favorite player, my idol was Carmelo. Yeah. I feel like, oh, yeah, I got a similar game. So everything he did, I tried to do. Yeah. Like, that's why I was wearing the headband and everything. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah. Once I got to, like, middle school, I, I still wasn't playing as much, but I still had, like, a quiet confidence about myself. And I thought I was better than people, but I just – my game wasn't up to par yet. But I just kept working. And I think as the years went by, they really clicked for me probably my, my sophomore year of high school. I think that's, like, when I started to go to camps to see everybody else that I was competing against. And now you see them in the NBA, and it's like, oh, like I was around the same guys. Probably my sophomore year, like going into my, my junior year, that summer going to my junior year, I probably picked up a few offers. And at that point, I'm like, if I can go to college, I can go to the NBA. It was always like 
at the high school, it was college for me. At the college, it was the NBA. So it was all just part of my process. And that was my my way of thinking at the early age. So, and my work ethic, I think, matched that. So That's good. Yeah. Did your work ethic ever have to change from level to level? Like, what what, what would you say, like, uh, and, and, and in your work ethic, like, was it longer hours or was it more like uh, – uh, I gotta be, you know, I gotta be uh, strategic on how many shots I get, or or what, whatever I'm trying to work on, or something like that. Yeah, I think uh, the work changed for sure as each level you you got obviously went higher, but you just like learn how to like manage yourself and like work. I think uh, when I was a kid, I was just going, 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 like from workout before the school, before school, practice at school, practice with AU after that, and then work out. So it was just always working out, but now it's like more so strategic in a sense, like uh. What I put, what I eat, what I when I'm lifting, you know, when I'm on the court. So, I think the difference now, it's, I would say, just the scheduling. I think uh, my work ethic was, it's always been the same, but just knowing, like, you know, certain days I do this, certain days I do that. And then the high school, I was just going. I wasn't eating the right foods. I wasn't like getting the right sleep. <laughs> yeah. I needed, but that was a part of being a kid. So, I can say I learned from that. But once I got to college, I, I learned how to go to sleep and like we had to be up at 6 a.m. for conditioning. I couldn't stay up at 2 in the morning, 3 in the morning. So I had to really like sharpen, like, I guess sharpen my skills a little bit off the court instead of on the court. That's that's really the difference. You got to do, take care of yourself more so off the court than on the court once you get to like college and the professional level. So Yeah. yeah so I want to talk about just, just like uh, another thing about uh, just like uh, your evolution, which is like eating. Yeah. Like, uh, you know, just, you know, I, I would love for you to just give Maybe, you know, I, I grew up with a friend, and, you know, he struggled, he struggled with his weight, you know yeah. what I mean? And I, I seen, you know, he came from a family that, yeah. you know, they struggled with their weight and yeah. they, you know, it, it, it kind of, you know, you know how it is yeah. where we For come sure. from. For so, sure. you know, it, it'll take your grandma out, it'll take your mother out, and then you have to, to make a change. But I just want to hear your perspective of how you evolve and just your eating habits and stuff like that yeah. and just your philosophy. Yeah, I was just having this conversation uh, probably like two days ago. I was telling somebody, if you, all the best basketball players, like the difference between being an NBA player and a uh, or elite NBA player and a, like a, just a, a friends guy is really just to shape you in. I think people look at LeBron, like his skill level is, is crazy. Like, I'm not saying LeBron not the most skilled guy, but you've seen guys that have more skill than him. They just don't last. But LeBron take care of his body. I think that's the main thing, like what you put in your body and like the sleep you're getting off the court and uh, how you're recovering. So I think going into high school, like high school, you don't, at least where I'm from, like where I'm from, you don't, I didn't have like a blueprint. I would say to follow this, follow that, you know, follow this person. It was just more so me figuring it out on my own. Like I went to school, like in the city, Fort Lauderdale, like right there, you got all the food around. So you just, you really just. <laughs> all get, the, uh, yeah. de describe the food. Where, <laughs> man, what's like, at the corner? What's man. at the corner of Dillard? You got. What's the first one? Right. If, if you buy, anybody with the Dillard, they know, like you got yeah. snappers, chicken and yeah. fish. <laughs> You got McDonald's, you got Dunkin' yeah. Donuts, you got yeah. Churches Chicken. Churches it's Chicken, It's all like yeah. neighborhood food. It's yeah. like, I mean, I had to go to practice at 4.30, so it's, yeah. it's so much I can do. I didn't have a car, none of that. So I had to yeah. like just eat food. And at that point, I was a little younger, so I could burn it off and yeah. things like that. But it wasn't good for my body. Once I learned, right. you know, learned out, learned to figure out my body type and what I can and can't eat, it just kind of got easier. But high school is eating terrible, man. I think every kid that go through that process, but the kids that can like notice that at a younger age and like, get ahead of that, that's the guys that, like, separate themselves at a young age. If I can go back now, definitely, like, eat better food for sure. But it was a part of my, my process, so. Yeah, yeah, man. So so where are you now in your career? Um, I'm going to my third year uh, professionally, but I feel like I'm going to my 10th year, honestly. I learned yeah. so much, like, throughout yeah. these three years and leaving school a year earlier than I had to was like a, uh, I guess a wake up call for me too, because everybody don't know what's in the real world they say until like you get out there yourself. And I was so, so used to just being so, um, I want to say uh, naive or innocent. I was a little innocent to the world, but you know, you start to figure out how the business side go of things. And, you know, like I said, go back to the food part, like what I can and can't do for myself. I can't carry myself how I used to as I was a 16, 16 year old, you know, I'm 24 now. So I had to like change my habits and how I think and, this is how I carry myself, and I think that was the that was the main thing of being professional until like an amateur. It's just how you carry yourself and how you market yourself, and you used to always tell us about like our brand, and our business. So like once I figured out that I am like the business and like I'm the brand, like I had to like kind of just change the uh, just scenery, um, like what I did, who I hung around, uh, environments I was in. It's just all about environments. So start to place myself in like environments where I can get better and like 
learn a little bit, you know, get knowledge from other people. So, yeah. so what what could you, what would you say to these kids out here that's struggling with, you know, I guess like, I guess the we all struggle with it when we're younger. This this part of what's really uh, my place in earth and. I guess how do I represent that? Like, uh, I, I guess like on this journey, kids are trying to prove, you know, that they're the guy they is, yeah. that they him. You know yeah. what I mean? So, what, mm. what does that look like? Honestly, I feel like none of that matters though. Until like <laughs> it, it really don't matter. I feel like it don't matter until like you get to that point in time where it's like time to show and prove. So, right. If somebody can say like they this person, that person, but if you don't have like the the work ethic or the knowledge or like, you know, the, the game or whatever to back it up, then it's just really pointless. I feel like uh, I was always like a quiet kid, like a humble kid. I right. think uh, my mom always like preached that to me, like, oh, be humble, be humble. But in reality, you see some of the greatest players, like they not that way. They like not arrogant or cocky, but they confident in themselves and they move that way. And you know, they, they don't do everything else everybody else do. So I would think in order to expect different results, Coach Jones and college, Coach Stan Jones always tell us that if you want to be different, you got to uh, – carry yourself different and uh, do different. So if you want different results and like different life for yourself than you had as a kid or like your family, you know, want to break that, I guess, curse or generation or whatever, you got to do different things than your parents might have did or, you know, just put yourself in different positions, uncomfortable positions in order to grow. I think that was my main thing. There were some days, man, I would be like, man, I do not feel like getting up. I do not feel like going to play or I never play just like do the things that you need to do. And as far as conditioning, uh, Taking road trips, man. We done been on road trips, like 10 hour road trips. I don't want to send them. On oh, hot buses. Yeah, like hot buses. Like oh, that's what like, you had to do then. Yeah. Like if I was like, nah, I'm good, Coach B. Like I ain't, I'm not. <laughs> I wouldn't have had an opportunity yeah. to play against like Wendell Carter and yeah. see all these coaches and just get exposed to a different world. I think that was my my main thing. I was I was telling my sister this, like I was exposed to like a different world at like age 16, 17. And I, it's, I was in DC like a couple of weeks ago and I saw Steven Adams. Yeah. It was in Vegas, my. I was like 16 years old, and I told him, I was like, I got a video with you. And uh, he was out there from the hotel, and he was like, man, that's crazy. I was, uh, that was my rookie year. I got drafted. Yeah. I was like, I was in high school, and I looked at you like, like I met an NBA player. Yeah. I'm like, he's like, oh, that's full circle. But it, I didn't see that. Like, I saw him, and from that day on, I'm like, oh, I've been around NBA players. Like, I've seen yeah. this person, that person. So now I just started to move like that and carry myself. Even if I wasn't there to that point, I knew I'd get, like, eventually get to that point. I'm still, like, working on myself and grinding and getting better. Overall, so yeah, I just take that same approach. What does the next, I guess, like in five years, what does that Raekwon grade look like? Uh, a lot wiser. I think a lot yeah. wiser for sure. Um, a businessman, uh, yeah. a family man. If it's in the car for me, man. <laughs> uh, yeah, if it's in the car for me, but I think for sure, like, just I'll be better than what I am today. I think that's my main thing. Just kind of getting better each week, each day, each year. I think every year I've been living, I've, I've gotten better off the court and on back on the basketball court. So I just want to be a better person. I think that's that takes like that's like half of the battle. If you're better, you're getting better like mentally, basketball is like that's it's like easy. It's real easy. So I think just sharpening my mind and just honing in on what I wanna what I see myself and how to see see my life like developing and the life I want to live. So yeah, just just really just getting better and stacking days. Right. I wouldn't be right if I don't mention your your strongest supporter, <laughs> which is your family. And I would say, you know, I love all of them. And I can't say which one is more powerful. I get good energy from all of them. And uh, I just want you to talk about your support system from your, you know, your mother, your sister, and your brother. You yeah. Know? Uh, honestly, I think I was, people say they want to be like who they are today without their family. But I probably want to be the person I am without my mom, my family. Like, even my dad, too. Like, just... um. They just provided every resource I needed for myself. I think uh, my mom can drive me like an hour before school to like West Palm Beach to work out or like she'll just have you like, just, she just gave you like free reins to like do whatever, like, you know, yeah. pick me up, take me this place, that place. And that's just, I don't think that every parent's doing that. Like uh, my mom, real strong believer in God, you know, obviously she has faith in, you know, Jesus Christ. And she just really just had blind faith in like my dream. And she said, uh, you know, if, she, if you want to do something, then I'm going to support you regardless. And I mean, once she said that, then, Whatever I needed, she used to pay for shoes. Uh, yeah, everything I needed for basketball, she did it. So whether that's camps, uh, or whatever, like I think that was that was the main thing. My sister, same way, she like my my second mom in reality. Like she did stuff for me when she was in college and helped me out, and, and really just seeing her like go through her process 
and um, at a young age, she had a kid, and you just see that, and you just she just kind of give you the blueprint on how you want to like you know keep grinding. And she got a business, you know, she works, she take care of her family, so she just gave me a blueprint to uh, really just how to be successful. I think she was grinding at a young age, sixteen, doing hair. My brother the same way. My brother was thirteen, fourteen, working at the park, driving on the golf carts, and yeah, uh, helping yeah. out in the community. So I'm just <laughs> like that's who we are, like as people, like we just uh, community people, family people, and we just work hard. I think we, everybody get up every day and just kind of just go. Go, uh, you know, work on their craft. And my mom, she, she wasn't working. She's been doing, taking care of herself and other people too. Like she open arms to my friends. And, you know, once you're my friend, you like really family. So anybody that come around me is family to us. So she just had that same approach with me. And, and, and I live my life kind of the same way. I think I'm a, I'm a real open and really got people gravitate towards me and my, myself. I still don't know why, but I mean, I guess I'm figuring it out. And like people starting to tell me about myself and I'm starting to figure out about myself. Like I bring that type of, energy and vibe to people too. So I guess I just get it from my mom, honestly. You know, yeah. Southern woman, Southern hospitality too. So yeah. yeah. So so tell me not just about just like uh people just look at the NBA and they and they look at your journey as just one of just like a physical, you know, uh test and adversity. But we know it's more than that because you just tell me it's just about some ways that you've grown. It can be, you know, spiritually, it could be, you know, mentally, it can yeah. be all of them and just tell me. Um, I mean, I think the best thing for me, like, it's so funny how my, my life, like, shook out for me. I think uh, the best thing for me, like, God blessed me with, like, adversity at a young age. And, like, he showed me, like, I wasn't as good that I, that I wanted to be at a young age. And it wasn't, like, always given to me. Like, I started playing in the fifth grade. And at that point, I was just, like, playing basketball. I was just having fun with it. And once I started to really like it and wanted to get on the court and play, like, and, and be good, like, I wasn't playing. Like, I was at the end of the bench. I was a shorter kid. I was shorter than everybody. I was a little chubby kid running around, just out there having fun. But like I was on the bench, and then once I started to transition and started to work harder off the court, like you know, obviously getting the gym, I still wasn't playing as much, and that kind of just led up to my high school years. My freshman year, I wasn't playing as much. Um, I didn't play basketball my sixth sixth grade year in middle school. Like you know, I started to get better seventh grade, eighth grade, but that was just still a kid. Ninth grade, played varsity, but didn't play at all. I was begging like Coach Burrow, so I'm like, man, I want to play JV, man. I just want to play yeah. basketball, but he wouldn't let me play. He saw the bigger picture too. So, um, my sophomore year played a little bit more, uh, helped us win once and I helped win some games too, but it wasn't like that starter role and like just off the leash and giving the opportunity. And my junior year, obviously, I played, started, you know, racked up a lot of accolades and uh, stayed, and we won state championship my senior year too and my junior year back to back. So, really just that showed me like how to, how to work just. Like molded me for that opportunity, and then I got to college, and it was just back to square one. I didn't, I redshirted. I was a top 100 player coming into college, and I'm like, okay, like I'm expecting to play. I had other schools that you know you get recruited, and you hear all these stories like, yeah, you come in, you can play, you can do this and that. But I, it wasn't that for me at Florida State, and that um, I had to sit on the bench and watch the whole year, and I was uh, a little frustrated. And I think that was probably the a pivotal moment in my life. I think I was a little, a little down on myself, and just kind of you, you start to think about all the like. The thoughts in your head about like, oh man, I want to go to the NBA, and you see all your peers playing at other schools and they doing well, and you just all that kind of just run through your mind. And I had to sit there and like just watch the game the whole time. And that that year, like alone, was probably the the moment I think that was like, all right, like yeah, I gotta like keep going better. I gotta keep being better and gotta keep going like with my journey because I saw guys that red shirted in from Florida State and got drafted the, the following year. I saw Fiondu, Kevin Gelly get drafted in the first round. So once I saw him do that. It was like, oh, yeah, like his own, like, for sure. I went into the next year, like, locked in. I stayed in at Florida State my whole – the freshman after my fresh, well, the summer after my freshman year, I stayed at Florida State the whole the whole summer. And I just grinded with uh, C.Y. He was the, uh, the coach that recruited me from Miami. C.Y. stayed in the gym with me the whole summer. Yeah. I'll never forget. We was out in the, in the sun running in Tallahassee heat, like 100 degrees. I didn't run two miles, like, he timing yeah. me. And at that point, like, I wasn't in the best shape, but he just showed me, like, all right, like, if you want to – Get to that level, like you got to do this first, and I, that just kind of gave me like the green light to just keep. I added that to my routine and just added like this is what I needed in order to get better. And the following year, it still wasn't the best year for me, but I was playing a little bit more. I sat behind some guys, but inside of me, I still feel like I was better than like a lot of the guys on the team, and I, I wasn't able to like showcase that still to, a, as much. And I, like I said, I look around the country, I saw my peers like playing. And they was getting all the accolades and all that. It was it was a tough time for me. I think the first two years of college, like that was the, the probably the lowest point in my life. I think 
but I just kept working. I think that would kind of got me out of that, you know, out of that uh, mental space. And the work started to show for me the following year, you know, my going into my junior year, I saw some of my, uh, some of my best friends get drafted. You had Trent Forrest, Patrick Williams, Devin Vassell, they all got drafted. And these guys I was in a gym with, playing one-on-one -on -one with, yeah. working out with. So I'm like, once that happened, I'm like, I can definitely get drafted. Like, I always knew I could get to the NBA, but I didn't know, like, how. Like, and that's when I started to figure out, like, how. I saw these guys do this, and they kind of just gave me that blueprint. Like I said before, I didn't have, like, a blueprint coming out of high school. I was just relying on pure, like, my work ethic and talent. And that's sometimes that's not always enough with certain guys you might hear, like, so, so many so many players like in the world that play basketball that don't play in the NBA that's probably better than some NBA players but they just never get to that point because they don't know how to get to that point or they just never had the resources or you know the the paths just didn't lead them there but once I saw the guys from my college team get drafted and coming from where I come from and for Ottawa I didn't have that and I wanted to be one of those guys that kind of paved the way and let's say uh what's the word I want to say like a pioneer but yeah really just kind of blazing the path for the next uh, generation I see kids behind me like they on YouTube, like, oh, I remember from YouTube. I'm like, man, like, that was never my, like, end goal into, in, in I guess, to inspire the next generation, but that just came with, like, my journey, and I think they looked at me like, oh, uh, like, because I was once that kid, too, at the park. I remember yeah. playing at the park. I look at these guys, and I'm like, oh, yeah, like, you had uh, Kenny Boynton, Brandon Knight, all from Fort Lauderdale. I'm like, yeah, yeah. I want to be like them. Yeah. I went to state championship games, and I guess that just came with my, my work and the, the success I had along my journey, but I was just doing it for the love of the game, and He's looking at me now like, okay, like he got to that point. Like I can do it too. So I guess that's just a blessing in disguise for me to like inspire the next uh, generation behind me. But it was definitely like all that starts from not playing. I think just, you know, that built, like having that fire in me to keep going and proving. Prove, I won't say prove people wrong. People always say that. But to prove myself right, I think I had like big aspirations. And I still do dreams for myself. And how I saw myself like shaking out, uh, my life shaking out, and my family life shaking out. And I just kept that with me. And I always – held that like real close to me. And I think whatever people said about me, I, I just kept going. Like people said like crazy stuff about me. I should play football. My whole family, like, you know, football coach, my dad a football coach, my great uncle football coach. I had a cousin that played in the NFL. So they're like, yeah, you should play football. Like, like how you gonna tell me about what I should do? Like, you know, it's just like, <laughs> how can you tell me what I should yeah. do? Yeah. Cause you, you can't play basketball. You're not successful at it. Or you never even thought about, you know, working towards that. Like, you can't tell me that. And I just kept, I bugged out all the noise and I kept going. I think that kind of just led me where I am today, just being consistent in my work and also, like, having that belief, like, within myself, not always, like, showing, like, shouting, like, oh, yeah, I'm confident or I'm this and that. I think just having that like, internal belief about myself, that that just took me, like, different days. Like, that made me get on the hot bus with, and drive 17 yeah, hours. Yeah, like, yeah. that led me to playing in, in Georgia, we traveling. So that, all that just the belief in myself just. Would you say that's, that's like uh... – that's the thing that that drives you the most because I, you hear all these stories of you hitting the bottom yeah. and you coming back, but like consistently you coming back. What is what's what's bringing you back to the top? What's that consistent thing you do that's just driving you back to like that? I guess that good mental headspace where you feel like I can do it. Yeah, uh, because that's toughness. Yeah, I think I really look at like people look at Kobe for like. Uh, how he was on the court and how he, like, carried himself. But in reality, like, he was the same kid I was. Like, a lot of the people that, that we look up to are, like, the same people that we were or, like, were as a kid. Like, i never forget. Like, I was that kid, like, that was on the end of the bench. And I, I see, like, Carmelo's my favorite, like, player. So he was probably that once that kid that grew up and wasn't getting opportunity, you know, that, you know, that he wanted. You, you always hear about all these guys that went to these schools, like John Morant, Damian Lillard. Like, it's really, like, they just had that belief in themselves and, I think that's just the foundation you you kind of you set at a young age. Whatever you that I would, that would be my advice to myself, like my younger self, like whatever you set as your foundation, like that's what you depend on. Like regardless, when things get like shaky and you know a little foggy, like just go back to what got you here. I think that was like standing in the gym, being consistent, taking care of myself, uh, and just being happy. I think um, when you're a kid, you just out there chasing the basketball, you playing the game for fun, like you don't think about how many points you scored or you know, this amount of money, this contract, that contract, like you just out there just playing. And I think all the success came with me just playing and like working hard. And uh, I think that was that was the main thing for me as a kid, like just just having that work ethic. People always say work hard, this and that, but like when you are like running miles, I, I used to be on the sand, like we, Coach yeah. Moe was in the sand, you know, run, yeah. we used to be out there running on the track. Like not many kids doing that. They probably in the AC or playing video games. Like that was never my, 
my goal. Like I was, I missed out on a lot of my my childhood. And I sacrificed a lot of my childhood. Uh, I would say memories to play basketball and chase a dream. And I mean, when you're chasing it, it's just like it, it feels like that's the right thing to do. I met some of my closest friends, met my mentors, you know. So I mean, I, that's all I can ask for myself. And like, that just goes back to the work. I think everything, all my relationships came through the work. All my best friends, we work hard together and we done grind together. So, you know, you see me grind and work. So that just, it really just fall back on the work. And that's my main thing. And you want to make that decision as a young age that I want to be a professional basketball player, then everything else go out the window. Like, you know, that's what you say you want to do it. Then whatever comes with it, that's what comes with it. Like you got to take all the good with the bad and whatever, because it's going to be ups and downs. I think that's the main thing. Like it's not always peaches and cream. People think that playing professionally, like you get to that point, it's always easy. Like, Never easy. It's been days where I'm like, man, it's tough for me. Like it's tough. Like sometimes I, I cried. I came. I cried. I did. I cried. I would say that never, my first practice, my first varsity yeah. practice, I cried. We're running the stairs and Dillard, man. It's cold. Yeah. It's ten o'clock at night. Yeah. I'm a freshman. I didn't know what to expect. I was just so nervous. I was. I was like, man, I couldn't even finish the suicide. Like I cried. I wanted to quit. Like, I wanted to quit that day. Like I can't do it. Like, but that built like character within me, and I think that just led me to this point. Like it's really just the character that came through. The work, everything come through the work. Good days, bad days, you feel good at work. Like that's that's just really what it is. Like so, you still, so you still in your mind still an underdog for sure, for sure. I feel would like that a, ever would that ever change through your basketball career? Uh, I don't know. I think that's a good question. Yeah. Like my mom and one of my friends asked me that too. Like when would I ever ever uh like be? I want to say satisfied or feel like all right, like like I'm I'm transitioning into a different like. But I don't think that'll ever be that put, like that way. Because I had people that didn't believe in me and still probably don't believe in me. And I had that belief in myself. So it's really just until I'm done and satisfied, I think I always had a mentality. Whether that's basketball, business, whatever. Like I'm trying to like get better. And if somebody say I can't do something, I, I want to do it. Especially if I feel like I'm capable of doing it. So I always had a mentality. You take that mentality in business, man. You'll yeah. be successful, yeah. man. Truly successful. Yeah. So what's your ten year plan, man? Mm. Ten years? Ten years, that's a long time from now, man. Ten years from now, I'll be thirty four. I'm twenty four. <laughs> that's a I hate to say that, man. Yeah. Thirty four. Yeah. But yeah. Thirty four, I feel like that'll be my my tenth year playing professionally, tenth or ninth year. And I think um obviously the more you play professionally, you have like business opportunities that present themselves like off the court too. So I think uh they just kind of diving into who I am as a person. I, I think I spent so much time uh, with basketball throughout my life and um, kind of just focusing on that. I, I didn't really, like, figure out who I was as a person yet. So I think as 10 years from now, I definitely know who I am as a person and what I want to, you know, how I want my life to look after basketball and just really just get into business. That may be through real estate or, um, honestly, anything that I think that I, I want to get into tech. A lot of things I want to get into and um, – I definitely want to see see myself having a successful basketball career. Ten years now, I want to make some money. I definitely want to make a lot of money. Yeah, I, can't, I mean, everybody want to play and you know get what they deserve, but make a lot of money, take care of my family. That's really just my goal. Like, I think ten years from now, just to set my my family up and uh, better than we are right now. I think that's that's the main thing. Just improving each year for us, and and it's not only just me because I always say like us because. I mean, it's more than like my life. I got my niece coming behind me. Obviously, I have kids one day too. So, really, just setting them up for generations behind them, and they can just pass that along and share my experiences. Because there's no, it's no really no point of, I guess, like having success if you can like share it and pass it down to people. And that's how you like maintain like long term success and really change the dynamic of your family tree and generational wealth and things like that. So, I'm just working towards that. I'm working towards generational wealth. Um, it really just uh, my game completely. I think uh, I'm going to be the best basketball player I can at the age 34. Obviously, I won't be as athletically gifted as I am right now. But, <laughs> yeah, just holding on my skills. Yeah. I think that's my main thing. And if you keep basketball the main thing, everything else will figure yourself out. You know, the, the, the better I play, the more opportunities to come present themselves off the court. And, you know, the more people I meet and different environments not being. So really just sharpening up my game and taking care of my family. I think setting us up and, and working towards something in the business world. I think I'm a pretty – business savvy guy so yeah uh, yeah well man i appreciate you coming man uh and i appreciate you uh even your mother and your family even believing in you know a dream and a vision i have for yeah. you you know what i mean and i seen it and when you was a young boy you had the commitment to 
you know, want to be super successful yeah. and you had the hunger yeah. and you had the discipline to do it. And, you you know, sometimes in, in life we could have the talent. We can we, we've seen it happen to your neighborhood. You know, a lot of times where it's been struck, you know, with with, with lightning bolts of, you know, these professionals yeah. year in and year out. But, yeah. you know, they don't make it because they don't possess the off the court skills that you have. Yeah. And, you know, your mother is a humongous, you know, part of that, you know, getting it done. And so are the old, other coaches, Barrows, and, you know, your sister played a humongous role. And she was, you know, sure. terrific yeah. through this process. But you always somebody that, you know, put your I, – I can always look back and be proud of, you know. And everything that you get in today, you know – understand it's a blessing and it's going to work out in your best, you know, your best, yeah. your best, uh, your best will. All right. Yeah, man. Appreciate you having me. Appreciate y'all for real. It's my, yeah. it's my first podcast. Second podcast. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, man. It's been good, man. Yeah. Ooh, amazing show with Raekwon Gray, man. Uh, hopefully he can change some lives, man. Hopefully you inspire. Hopefully you believe, man. On this podcast, we're going to be talking about basketball business. We're going to be talking about hoop journey. How can we, how can you, how can all of us come together and be a part of this basketball community that's willing to uplift the other community? Hold on one more thing before I make you do some suicide or run around a mile. Hey, I need you to subscribe. Thank you.